Um, and thank you, thank you so much for, again, making this a priority to, to be with the body of Christ on a Sunday morning. That's not a lot to ask, is it? You know, when we think about it, how many hours in a week? Anybody know right away? Seven times 24? What's that? <laughs> yeah, great answer, a lot. Anybody know? What is that? 168, is it? No one's challenging it, so it must be right. 168 hours. And, uh, and all, you know, we, for most of us, we just take two hours out. And, and we're a part of a gathering like that. So 166 hours is yours. And uh, that's tied up with work and home life. And so I just encourage you, just a few hours in, in there to make it a priority because this actually is good for the soul. And this is important and it's, uh, it's scriptural. And so thanks so much for being a part of our gathering today. And uh, Christmas is just a couple of days. A couple of weeks, sorry. Not a couple of days. Panic attack. Couple of weeks, and uh, come on, let's be honest. Some of, some of you are on the naughty list, and uh, and you ain't getting anything for Christmas. Uh, but for the most of you, most of you, you you've been good all year, and uh, you're gonna get some gifts. And and you ever get a gift that you didn't like, but you didn't know how to tell the person you didn't like it? Anybody else? Yeah, I think all of us did, right? You get a gift, and you're not really liking it, and you're not really sure how to tell that person. I came across a couple of things. They're not really funny, but they are things that might help you out. If you ever find yourself in that awkward moment, you can say things like, Wow, now that's a nice gift. You shouldn't have. I don't deserve it. Why don't you take it back? I mean, you could use that. Or, or you know what? Recently, I, I did put on some weight. And uh, it would fit me if, you know, you gave it to me a few months ago. So why don't you find someone else who who maybe make use of this? Or or what about this? Um, you know what? Wow, what a lovely painting. I think I'll put it in the basement. You could always say something like that. I don't know if it'll go over well. I sure hope the dog doesn't eat it. Um, or I love it. But you know what? If I wear this, people just might feel a little jealous. So you could use that if you want. Or... Or what about, I just told my wife this year that every gift I received, I was going to give it to charity. So why don't you go ahead and, and do the same thing? But there is a gift that, that we're all given that our prayer is that you would receive it. It's the gift of the birth of Jesus Christ. It's a gift that we can't reject. We shouldn't reject. And yet so many times, many of us, we, without knowing it, in a sense, kind of reject it because it interferes with our lives. Last week, I talked to you about the word Emmanuel. And if you didn't get a chance to be here last week, I encourage you to, to be a part of that. Go back to our, our uh, YouTube page and watch that uh, because it ties in with this next number of weeks and last week. Emmanuel means what? God with us. And he's not some God that's far off, oblivious to our lives, but Emmanuel actually means he's not there. He's here with us. It's incredible when you think about it. And if there's one thing we need to understand, that God is not absent from us. He's not unaware. He's not too busy somewhere else. Matter of fact, God is a personable God, and he's with you. It's easy to think, well, he's with someone else, or he's with everyone else. You know, he's with you. He's with you. He is. He's with you. And that's the difference in Christianity versus so many other religions out there it focuses on having a personal relationship with the one we serve, our God. All these other religions to serve their small G God, and they follow the teachings the best they can, but it's from a distance. No other religion offers what God offers to us, capital G, God of all, is that we can have a relationship with Him. And the incredible thing is that He actually took the first step. He didn't wipe out the world like he did the first time and kept Noah and his family. But he said, this time, you know what? Sin has broken our relationship. I'm not going to wipe the world out. I'm going to do something different this time. I'm going to go to my people. I'm going to go to my creation. And that's what Christmas is about. God with us. He wants a relationship. And it's only when we receive Christ that that relationship starts. So many of us, we try to we try to understand God from a distance, and we're like, well, I can learn about Him. Sure you can. I can go to church. Yeah, you can. I can listen to good music. Yeah, you can. I can do good things. Yeah, you can. But a relationship will never start until we open our hearts to receive the gift of Jesus Christ to us. That's when the relationship starts. 
So last week we started in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. It says, in the beginning, I don't have my, uh, my little thing here that switches slides. Yeah, thank you, Jeremy. Totally forgot to get that. I'm going to see if I can do this from up here. I might need your help there, tech guys, but let's see. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. But today, we're going to look at, just briefly, the book of John, which also starts off with the very same phrase, in the beginning. In the beginning. In the, no, not, not yet. I'll take it over, see if I can take it over from here. In the beginning. The beginning of what? Sometimes we read scripture and we're like, we just read it. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And, and then John talks about in the beginning. And, and in the beginning of what, though? Surely not the beginning of God, because I thought God always existed. Yeah, you're right. He did. He's always existed. The Bible says he always was, he always is, he always is to come. Matter of fact, Colossians chapter 1 says he is before all things. So he's before time. He's before all, I, oh, ouch, I don't know if I, like, really, God had no start? He, he wasn't formed somehow? No, he was before all of that. He was before everything. God was from the beginning. Don't ask me how, because I don't know how. I don't know how you can always be, but God has always been. In the beginning, the Bible says, so it's not talking about the beginning of God. And for some of us, uh, maybe that makes no sense in your world. Anybody here, it has to make sense on paper. You, you just function in life like that. You know, you have, you, you struggle with certain things because it has to, you have to be able to explain it. If you can't explain it, then it's a struggle for you to believe something that you're just not quite sure you can explain on paper. And so this probably hurts your brain because you're used to formulas, but there is no formula. There's nothing in the case of God. He always was. There was no beginning for him, but there was for us. So in the beginning refers to the beginning of creation, not the beginning of God. See, he's not limited. You know God's not limited to time? Man, we're, we, our lives are based around time. Everything we do is dependent on time. God is not, time is not even, I'm sure God's like, what is time? What is that? God's not limited to time at all. Matter of fact, there is no time with God. God doesn't work on our time. So, so John chapter 1, verse 1 says this. Of course you wouldn't work. Oh boy, I'm going to need the help today. Somebody came in this morning and they said, Oh, wow, hey, it's good to see you guys. You're not running around trying to troubleshoot. Yeah, well, that was this morning. This is now. There's always something, always something that'll, that'll, that'll glitch. And so in the beginning, the Bible says, was the word. And the word was with God, and the word was God. Now, the word was with God, and the word was God. I'm no theologian, but I know enough to know that how can something be with something and yet be that something? It's like, it's like me saying, um, I'm with my son, but I am my son. Does that even make sense? In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The word was with God, and the word was God. And we think of the word, maybe we think, you know what? Oh, he must be talking about a book, because... That's how we identify with words. It's, it's got to be a book. It's got to be something. You must be talking about the Bible, or you must be talking about the spoken word. What do you mean by word? What, what is that? The word was with God, and the word was God. Well, if you haven't figured it out yet, let me just explain. The word is referring to Jesus, and Jesus is God in the fullest sense. In the beginning was Jesus, and Jesus was with God, and Jesus is God. I know. I know. Ouch. That's big. That's big. He was God. He's with God. He's equal to the Father, and the Word was God, Emmanuel, God with us. Colossians chapter 
1 verse 15, it says, The Son is the image of the invisible God. The firstborn over all creation. For in him all things were created, things in heaven and on the earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities. All things have been created through him and for him. Did you know you were created for God? You were created for God. You really were created for God. Sometimes we try to do life without God, and if we would just understand, my life was created for him. Not to be absent from him. I'm created for God. I, I, maybe you wake up in the morning and go, what's my purpose in life? Your purpose is for God. You were created for him. Well, what do I do? What do I do? Just understand. Start with that. You were created for him. Once you understand you were created for him, that will help you decide what you do for him. You were created for him. The word is Jesus. The word was God. Philippians chapter 2 verse 6 says, Who being in very nature God did not consider equality with God something to be used for his own advantage. Think about that. So Jesus was with God. Jesus is God. But he didn't consider himself equal, equal to God. Rather he made himself nothing. There's a, there's a sermon for us. Right? When was the last time you made yourself nothing? Jesus made himself nothing by taking on the very nature of servant being made in human likeness. God with us. That's Emmanuel. God with us. And right now, he's with you. Some of you need to hear that. He's with you. He's with you in the stuff you're going through. He's with you in the stuff you're going through. They're talking to some people yesterday, uh, visiting with some people who just, their, their health is not well. And, and, uh, and though, yeah, we, we've been able to watch online, and we've been, been encouraged by what's happening at Streams Church. Uh, you know, if you're watching today, God is with you right there. He's with you. He's, he's with you. And so some of you put on the face. You get it. You, you come and you smile and you try to get through a Sunday morning and then you leave and, and you're, just, you're just overwhelmed by stuff in life. Some of you need to know that God is with you. And he created you for him. He's with you. God with us right now. That's the story of Christmas, the birth of Jesus, God's son. And he wants a relationship with you. He wants our attention, our time. He wants our lives. And maybe you're here thinking today, man, this is, this is unbelievable. I don't know. Like, like, my brain is hurting. Like, how can God be Jesus, Jesus, God? He's with God. He's his God. He came to us. He, like, how is this even possible? Like, I'm not sure I can even grasp this. It just seems a little unbelievable. But you know what? If we just understand that Christmas is more than the shopping sprees. Christmas is more than the parties. Christmas is way more than the music. Christmas is when we grasp that we were created for him. And God in his love said, I'm doing it different this time. I'll take the first step and be with them. And the response from us is that we would be with him. Emmanuel, God with us. If you leave this place today, if you leave next week, if you just can remember this one thing, God with us. God with us. And yeah, I know it's unbelievable. And Christmas, I mean, yeah, Christmas is a big thing. I mean, it's massive. And, and uh, some songs even claim that it's the most wonderful time of the year. Anybody know that song? It's the most wonderful time of the year with kids jingle belling and everyone telling be of good cheer. It's the most wonderful time of the year. And as Christians, we know Christmas is big, but maybe for us it's in different ways, right? We know it's about Jesus, but sometimes, though, it's, it's very tough. This Christmas season just becomes so big, and, and most of the time, it's not even about the birth of Jesus. I will confess to you that most of my week, I do not think about the birth of Jesus. When it comes to Christmas, I, I, it's, it's hard. I'm with you. It's like, I got to get this ready. I got to do this. I got to, what about this? Or we didn't get this done. Or what about planning this? And we were so caught up in doing all these things. Very seldom, you know, like I don't spend maybe not even daily thinking about this is all about the birth of you, God. That you came to us. You gave us your son, Jesus. And yeah, it would do us so good. It would do me so good if we just stop the busyness sometimes and just begin to reflect and say, God, wow, you actually created me for you. You love me that much. You want a relationship with me. You care about me that much. 
It's always interesting when it comes to Christmas, right? You know, when was the last time you celebrated a birthday and didn't get any presents? Right? Anybody have a birthday party recently? And you didn't get any gifts? You know, maybe you're a wife here and you thought, ah, you know what, it's my birthday. I'm sure I'll get something nice, but your husband got all the gifts. Would that make sense? Would that really be, uh, you know, kind of, would that make you feel good? You know, or, or mom, it's your birthday and your kids get all the gifts or, or you know, or it just, it just doesn't make sense. And yet Christmas sometimes is like that, right? Jesus is an afterthought. His birth doesn't really matter. Yeah, we acknowledge it. I'll go to the Christmas Eve service. I'll go to the Christmas Day service. But you know what? Really, it's about, it's about all the other stuff. Let me just caution you and, and encourage you to, to make it about him. And some of you have. I, I get that. But many of us, we, we've, we've struggled with that. God with us. 400 years. For 400 years, people didn't hear from God. They didn't even hear from God. It was prophesied that God would send them the Messiah to rescue his people. And the Jews believed their Messiah would come, but in a way that they were expecting. Not in the way it actually happened. I mean, the Jews were thinking that Jesus was going to show up in all the thunder and lightning, the glory. It would be massive. You know, he would come in on, come in on a stallion, right? Like a warrior and wipe out the Roman government. And he would rescue the Jewish people and save them from all of the abuse and torment from their captors. And, and they're expecting him to come in just like that. And, and he doesn't. Completely messes them up. He comes back for his bride, the church. But we know that that's not how Jesus came. He, his entry was small. And most of us didn't even, I mean, most didn't even know about it. Didn't even know that Jesus had arrived. Matter of fact, many people didn't even know who Jesus was until he went on to do his ministry in his early 30s. Prior to that, people were like, Jesus who? Who's Jesus? I read an article, and this is what they talked about Jesus' birth. The truth is that everything about Christ seems small from a human's perspective. Right? Think about it. Our Savior was not born in a big metropolis, but in a small town of Bethlehem. He grew up in, in a despised region of Galilee. He was not born in a palace where kings are, but in a lowly stable. The wise men had to search and diligently followed the star to find him. They didn't even know where he was. Like, where is this Jesus? We've got to follow a star to find him. And, that, and, and the way that he came, certainly, I mean, he was meek, he, his throne was invisible, he, he died a criminal death on a cross, naked and nearly alone, he didn't have a military headquarters, I mean, he had no place to lay his head, the Bible says, his grave was a borrowed tomb, he was called meek and lowly, and certainly not a description fitting for a king. And the way he came certainly wasn't ideal according to us, right? The way Jesus came, think about it. Who would have wrote a story like this? A young teen gives birth to the Son of God. Would, would you have written it that way? I wouldn't have written it that way. There's got to be a better entry than that. It's got to be more grand than that. I mean, really, a teen gives birth to the Son of God in a barn. I was thinking, how unbelievable is that? To believe in Jesus whom we've never seen... To believe in God who we've never seen. I mean, it doesn't even make sense. And his birth, I mean, it just seems so unbelievable. And yet, it's true. It's true. It's true. I was reading some things that are, that are actually very unbelievable, yet they're true. Just like the birth of Jesus. Here's a few facts. I don't even know how you can try it. Let me just grab a Kleenex really quick. So this, let this represent like a piece of paper. Because it's said that if you fold a piece of paper 42 times, it'll be thick enough to reach the moon. That's, apparently, that's, yeah, that's happened. Did you know if there's 57 people in a room, there's a 99% probability that at least two people share the same birthday? Anybody born March 14th? Stink. I was hoping somebody would say yes, just to prove my point. But there's, there's, there's a 99% probability that two of you in this room right now have the same birthdays. Anybody here, you already know that? Oh, right here, look, two people, one person back here. They have the same birthdays. All right, so that's apparently true. The world, listen to this one, the world's entire population of ants weighs the same as the entire population of humans. There's that many ants. 
that many ants that, that, that the entire population of ants will, will be the same weight as the entire population of, of, uh, of humans. Here's one. You've heard this one before. There, there's more power in my phone than was in the, it was, that was in the computers that, that put man on, on the moon in, in 69. Did you know that? There's more power in this phone than the computers that they used. Unbelievable, but true. Here's another one. A teen girl gives birth to the Son of God. Unbelievable, but true. True. We're not called to figure it all out, but we're called to simply believe and trust that Jesus' birth is real and God is with us. I'm going to ask uh, Jeremy if you just come back up and I was kind of, I was kind of just, um, I don't know, just hit a hit a good spot in my heart when, when we walked out on the stage and and I could just hear the voices singing, "Holy, holy, holy." And I'm thinking, you know, if that sounds that good to someone like me, just a nobody, can you imagine how that must sound to the one who created us? I mean, how honoring is that, that we would be able to cry out, holy, 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 because you are. And you love us that much that you came to us. God gave his life to us, and he wants a relationship with you. And I know it's hard to believe, but he loves you that much that God was willing to do whatever it took to have a relationship with you. And he sent his son. And I don't know the condition of your hearts in this place today honestly don't maybe we're all well on our way we're well on our journey with the Lord and and we're doing fantastic and our hearts are where they need to be but maybe just maybe there's somebody in this place or somebody watching today online that you know deep down you're not where you need to be and this relationship with God your creator is is possibly broken in some way or maybe the enemy has been able to do something in your heart that's caused pain to your father. I have no idea where you are. But it's good. It's good to examine our hearts daily. See where we are. Lord, am I, am I where I need to be with you? It's not like the, you know, your relationship with God is not like the George Foreman grill. Just set it and forget it. It, it, it ain't like that. Your relationship with God is, is a lifestyle. It's more than saying a prayer whenever that was and just living your life the way you want to live it is way bigger than that. It's a constant just opening and being transparent with your Father and saying, God, is there anything in me that, that you're not approving of? I mentioned to you last week, that's kind of Maybe a dumbed-down version of sin. It's anything God disapproves of. If he doesn't approve of it, then it's, it's disobedience. And so, Lord, is there anything in my life that you disapprove of? Is there anything in my life that, that I've approved of, but, God, you certainly haven't approved of it? And I don't know where you are in all of that. But God does. That's how personable he is. He knows everything about you. He knows what you were doing last night. He knows what you are doing last week. He knows what you're going to be doing later today. He knows what you're thinking. He knows what you're struggling with. He knows my shortcomings. He knows my weaknesses. He knows everything about us. He's not oblivious. He's not over somewhere now trying to work things out where the wars are happening. And, and he's forgotten about you. He's God with us. He's God with you right now, right in this place, right in this place right here, this, this heart. He's with us. And he wants a relationship. And for anyone who's in this place and you've not opened that door, you haven't let him in, or maybe you cracked the door a little bit and you let them peek in, but you've not really surrendered fully. I want to give you opportunity today to do that.
Or maybe at one point in your life, you, you open the door to him, but you find like lately in the last while, it's almost like you're nudging him out. Lord, you're making me feel a little uncomfortable. I don't know if you ever got so mad one time, you yelled at someone and said, there's the door. Let's not, let's not ever open the door and say, Lord, see your way out. And none of us would ever, I'm sure, do that or think that. But if he is who Scripture teaches us, that he's holy, then we owe it to him to open our hearts and let him cleanse us from all the unrighteousness, all the, the junk, the stuff, that we would walk clean before him. Remember, the Bible teaches us he's coming back for a bride without spot or wrinkle. He's coming back for a bride, and you're included in that if you're a follower of Jesus. He's coming back for those who live in righteousness, for those who are walking toward him, not walking away from him, not trying to do life without him. He's, he's coming back for a church who loves him, who's in relationship with him. And I want to give you an opportunity today maybe to start that. Maybe you're watching online, and, and for some reason you came across this this online church and you don't even know much about it but you just know that something's being said that's starting to maybe just get you thinking that's not us that's not me that's just God loving you and saying I'm with you and I want a relationship with you and the response for all of us is to open that up and I want to give you some time now to put aside all the crazy stuff that comes along with Christmas all the schedules and the commitments, all the headaches and the stress. I want to give you some time just to say, Lord, I'm here. You came to me and I want to, I want to be with you. And maybe you need to have a moment of repentance where you say, Lord, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for, for living life the way I've lived it. I want to be right with you. If you're sensing that today, can I tell you you're in a good place? That's the Holy Spirit working on your heart because he loves you. Don't ever think, wow, I, I just feel so overwhelmed. I feel, I feel like I need to just connect with God in some way. I just I, Listen, that is a good spot to be in. Don't ever be content when the presence of the Lord lifts. It's not a good place to be. And so if the Lord is doing something, if these, the Holy Spirit is really convicting you of some things right now, you be thankful for that and you respond to that. And you give him permission to, to do what he needs to do. And so I want to give you opportunity to take some time, just you and God time right now. You and him. Distraction free. God, you've got my attention. You've got my mind. You've got my heart. Take a few moments.